I'm John Atkin, I'm a civic historian in Vancouver, and I'm uh, here to tell you a little bit about the history of South Granville Street. Uh, we're standing underneath the uh, south end of the Granville Street Bridge, and we're actually looking at the remnants of the streetcar tracks that used to line Granville Street and 4th Avenue. These streetcar tracks are part of a really early system of streetcars that started in the city in 1889, 1890, and Granville Street and the Granville Street Bridge in 1891 was where the first streetcar line actually came across Falls Creek and all the way up to 9th Avenue, today's Broadway. The streetcar is the reason we have South Granville Street. That streetcar line brought business and development up the slope, and so we had uh, South Granville fully formed by about 1907. The reason South Granville Business District exists is because of the Granville Bridge. There have been three Granville Street bridges. The first bridge was built in the 1880s, a fairly crude timber structure that connected Granville Street with crude trail through the forest here on the South Shore. The second bridge was a much more substantial structure. It even had a swing span in the center to allow ship traffic on Falls Creek to go through the span. It was the bridge that carried the streetcar tracks through the downtown over the bridge and up the hill to 9th Avenue. The second bridge lasted until the 1950s when the city of Vancouver thought that they needed to build a much more substantial structure. The current Granville Bridge, opened in the 1950s with great fanfare, is a humongous structure. It was built under the belief that there was still going to be fairly major ship traffic in False Creek, so its height is actually equal to the largest coastal freighter of the day. So when you got up and over the hump of the bridge, you're trying to get up and over the funnels of steamships. In the 1950s, it was all about the automobile, and so the new Granville Bridge was designed to accommodate eight lanes of traffic and actually connected into the provincial highway system. By this time, the streetcars, which had opened up South Granville and created the business district, had already been taken off most of Vancouver streets. Though, today, you ride the electric trolley bus system, and that actually follows the original streetcar route. It's hard to imagine today's Granville Street as a single track trail through the towering forest, but that's what this street was, the North Arm Road. The early muddy trail connected the very small town of Granville down to the communities on the Fraser River. Over time, the North Arm Road became access to the forest for logging, and as the forest was cleared, the Canadian Pacific Railway looked at developing much of its property. Apart from a few houses, Granville Street really developed as a business street. Granville Street's businesses developed as any neighborhood street would. It had the butcher, it had the baker, it had a small movie theater, and it even had your local Piggly Wiggly outlet. South Granville Street quickly became one of the major entry points into the city of Vancouver. With the rise of the automobile, we saw a number of very elegant gas stations built along the street. Among the oil companies that had stations along Granville Street, Imperial Oil had a fantastic one at Broadway and Granville. The gas station was replaced by the Dick Building, itself an equally elegant building done in a Gothic style. While many of the gas stations along the street have been demolished and replaced by newer buildings, the store behind me is actually a renovation of one of these original gas stations. The intersection of South Granville and 9th Avenue, or as Broadway as it's known today, is a very important intersection because of the streetcar coming up the hill in 1891. From the 1930s right through until the 1990s, the southwest corner of Broadway and Granville was home to the Aristocratic Restaurant. The Aristocratic was part of a small local chain of restaurants throughout Vancouver, but this was the last and most popular location. On the corner of South Granville and 12th Avenue, we have Douglas Lodge. Built in 1912, this is one of the more prominent buildings on the street. Douglas Lodge reflects the aspirations the street had in the early part of the century. Unfortunately, building it in 1912 meant you were one year away from the Depression. The Depression of 1913 brought all building activity to a halt. That's why Douglas Lodge and a couple of other buildings stand out today in amongst the low-rise commercial district. The area between Broadway and 16th Avenue, just below Shaughnessy Heights, was developed in the 1920s and 30s as an apartment district. The architecture of this area draws its inspiration from the Shaughnessy Heights neighborhood. And what's surprising today is that the majority of these buildings still survive. 16th Avenue was the original boundary for the city of Vancouver. Beyond that was the municipality of Point Grey and the Canadian Pacific Railway's Shaughnessy Heights subdivision. The modernist building behind me, Highcroft Towers, actually sits in the kitchen gardens which once supplied all of the fruits and vegetables for the McRae Mansion, named Highcroft. 
Highcroft Tower is built in the late 1950s as one of Vancouver's finest modernist structures. If you're walking or driving along South Granville, you can hardly miss the Stanley Theatre and its neon signs. Built in the 1920s with a combination of live theatre for vaudeville and movies, the Stanley has been an important part of Vancouver's cultural history. The theatre is designed with a mix of Spanish and Mission Revival styles which were popular at the time. The theatre's interior is in a modified neoclassical style. The Stanley boasts two neon signs, one from 1947 in pinks and greens, and the other one is more modern from 1957. The Stanley Theatre continues to play an important role in the South Granville neighbourhood. And today, after extensive renovations, the Stanley is now home to live theatre produced by the Arts Club. In 2007, South Granville celebrated its 100th year as a business district. To commemorate this event, legacy plaques were designed and installed at various locations throughout South Granville. Each plaque highlights a unique aspect of the area's history. As well, a time capsule was dedicated and sealed in the sidewalk in front of the Stanley Theatre. It is to be opened August 2nd, 2107. Please visit the South Granville website to find out more about this area's exciting history.